Okay, do I have sound now? Can you hear me? I even did a still no sound. I did a quick recording today so, so that, that I, I could. could uh, uh, can, can you hear me now? now? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. No, no feedback, feedback, right? right? I was uh, playing around and making sure that the microphone worked because a couple of times ago it did not work and it took me a little bit to figure out. So I was practicing recording this today to make sure I had a microphone. So I'm glad it's working now. So what I was saying is thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to be here to uh, paint with you guys and show you this painting. Uh, inspired from a photograph from Pixabay, which I have in the description below. I also have, I do have feedback, okay. How about now? I also have, um, am I still having feedback? I'll wait till you answer me. You, you can hear me, there is an echo. An echo, 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 okay. Let's see what's going on here, because I only have the one microphone. Okay, do you have sound now? Okay, so is there sound now? Sound is back, okay, and it's good. No echo or feedback or anything? Awesome. Okay, good. Uh-oh. We do have sound, because somebody just typed in lost sound, so I want to make sure if we have sound or not. It shows my mic is working, so okay. Um, Alright, description below is the link to the photo that inspired this painting, and the list of paints, and the conversion for Deco Art acrylic paints, and the brushes I believe I used. Yes, I think I put the brushes on there and where you could purchase the Dynasty brushes. So, um, I am going to see if I can make me a smaller. Let me turn and get my. Okay, there's a me. So, this is what we're painting today. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait to paint this with you. So, this is a 9 by 12 canvas. Uh, today I'm painting on a 9 by 12 canvas panel. Um, if you're painting along, you can paint whatever surface that you have. Uh, you know, I was just going to paint today on a board, but I went and got, ran and got some canvas panels because I didn't have any this size and I wanted to have some. Um, so let's go over the brushes that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a 1 inch flat. I've got a 10 and a 12 chisel blender. Um, four and a six filbert, but I'm thinking I may have only used the four. No, I think I used the, the uh, I used the six mostly. I used the four for a couple of small ones. And then some rounds, a two, a one, and a ten o liner, a quarter inch deer foot brush, and this is um, what I use in the background. This is a dynasty brush. Uh, it's 200 series. It's domed. It's very soft. I use it dry, but any kind of domed softer brush that you have would work just fine. Um, 
I don't know that a flat brush would work well. You could probably get by with just a filbert brush if you wanted to use a filbert brush because we're going to do a little scrubbing and stuff and, you know, mostly making circles. So um, you can probably use just about any brush that you have on hand, but I just wanted to tell you the one that I use. I also like to use this for clouds. It comes in different sizes. Um, this one's a 12 here, and this one's more pointed on the end of it, where this one's just, you know, a nice soft dome, and this one's a little more pointy. But uh, those are the brushes that we will be using today. You would need your uh, water basin, your paper towel, your palette, and then the paints we're using are DecoArt paints, uh, Traditions paints love these paints uh, they are artist grade paint uh, lots of pigment in them just absolutely love them so we're going to be using Hansa yellow medium and medium green uh, carbon black and titanium white and the bottles is how the paint used to come they now come in tubes like this but I still have some bottles to use up and we got raw sienna and burnt sienna you will also need some glazing medium or some kind of uh, flow type medium that will make your paint a little more transparent. I like the glazing medium because I can get it dry quicker. Um, most of those other mediums extend the open time of your paint quite a bit and uh, I prefer something that I can dry quickly uh, with my heat tool if it doesn't dry as fast as I want it to because we don't want to lift the paint. And then, of course, I have my spritzing bottle, which I will spritz on my palette. So let me get my palette camera up here. There we go. So I'm just going to go right ahead and spritz my palette here. I won't need this water at first, but I always like to have it spritzed. So we're going to work on getting the background done first. The first thing that we have to do is apply a coat of... Um, like an undercoating layer because we're going to have to do the background twice before we start applying this technique on here and that is called a bouquet technique um, it is generally done in photography you can see that a lot in photography the blurred out background that's what it means a blurred out background and um, so that's what that technique is and it comes in all different styles and forms so it can be you know more sharp or you know really really blurred out hi Anita I'm so glad you joined me today all right so I'm getting my um, one inch flat wet and I'm going to put out I don't really need to shake these paints these these paints don't need to be shook like the Americana paints do Let's put out some of our green and some of our yellow. And hopefully I'll have enough paint to do this project here. These bottles are getting low and I didn't get any extra out. We're going to grab some black. Maybe it will come out of the bottle. Okay, black paint. So these are the colors we're going to start with. So we're going to start light to dark a little bit lighter than this up here and this will have we'll have some dark patches I mean it, it's it's just gonna be it's gonna look like a mess when we first start so uh, don't be shocked or upset by it because it will definitely look messy at first so I'm gonna take my brush and load it with some of this green paint it's a nice big flat brush we want it we want to work wet into wet paint so we're just gonna start applying this bright green paint on here and if I lift up my canvas it's because I'm having a glare and can't see it. I'm going to get a little tiny bit of yellow and blend that in there. We don't have to do too much uh, blending on this first layer because the second layer is the one that um, will make all the difference. I'm going to grab some black and put some over there and then go grab some green. And every now and then I will grab some water just to help make the paint move on this dry canvas. So once we get the second layer on the background, the background itself is going to look gorgeous, even without the bouquet effect. So I'm just picking up colors at random. 
that's getting pretty dark down there so I'm going to grab some just green if you get too much black it'll take over so you can always go wipe out your brush and then go pick up some other colors and keep going up in here we're going to have a little tiny bit of a dark spot so I'll just put a little bit of darker stuff in there and then we'll go down here And it's going to be just messy, messy, messy. And I'm sure my background won't look exactly the same as my first one. I'm just going to lay my paintbrush aside. It's got enough uh, paint and moisture. Sorry, the fan was blowing my hair in my mouth. Um, that by the time I get this dry, my brush won't dry. So I'm going to quickly dry this. Hi, Laura, Claudette. Thank you for joining me. I'm so happy to have you all here. So just a quick dry. You want to make sure that it is dry though, because when you go to put on your second layer, if it's not dry, you're going to lift that paint off. And you'll see the canvas underneath poking through, and we don't want to see that. We want to make sure it gets good and dry. And it doesn't take too long with the heat tool. I'm ready to go back in. I'm going to wipe my brush because I don't want to have any of that dark color in starting this second layer. Get some more green out. Alright, I'm going to load my brush with this bright green here and start on my second layer back here. A little bit of yellow kind of brighten up this corner a little more yellow and we're going to do wet on wet blending so this is where you might have to grab a little bit of water not too much just a little bit I need a tiny teeny tiny little bit of black because I want to have a little dark area going on in here maybe a little more black than that and I'm just going to slip slap blend it come up off of the pressure on the brush as you're doing this so that you don't um, start lifting the paint that you put on there. It's just a little tickle blend is what you're doing there. So I'm going to load with green and side load into my black because that black is a strong color and we're just going to keep working this all the way across. A little bit of water so I can very lightly blend right there. More green. I have to put out more green paint. Green and yellow here. Kind of bright right through there. Black and green. I'm going to have to get water. Move that paint to a little more black. And you won't go wrong whatever colors you pick up, however you do your background, it's going to be just fine. It all fades back and you don't see it. I'm getting a little bit of a glare, so I'm going to lift up just a little bit. I can see where my wet area is. I want some dark over here. A little bit. bit of water. It's starting to get tacky so I got just a tiny bit of water and now I'm up on the very tiptoe bristles of this brush because that water will start lifting my paint if I uh, put too much pressure and go down on that um, canvas too hard. So there's our background and even just that right there I think is gorgeous. So um, you know if, if you do a model background like that then uh, you know, it, it will work for anything. Alright, just washing out my brush here because we're going to be done with this flat brush now. We only needed it to paint in our background. Alright. Paper towel here. And I am going to quickly dry this. And 
I'm going to put it up on my easel so it can bring it a little closer to you, a little closer to me. Hi, Rosanna. And then we're going to work on that bouquet effect. Now, the background is critically important at this step that it is completely dry because we're going to be putting that glazing medium in our paint. And uh, we cannot have any kind of dampness in our paint or it will definitely lift our background so this is generally the point where I am um, if I'm gonna let it dry on its own I'm getting if I'm doing a line drawing but this one doesn't have one I'm making sure that I've got everything changing the water in my basin you know letting that paint dry getting a glass of wine whatever I need so I'm gonna move these papers we don't need them anymore. They can go in the recycle bin. I just had them to keep my surface clean. All right, so we're going to work on this bouquet background. So now you'll be able to see pretty good what I'm doing here. I'm going to be using this brush, this 200 series, size 14, domed soft brush. We need our glazing medium out, and uh, all of our colors that we're using here. Well, probably not the black. I'll, I'm going to add some white, Get a little bit more green out, and I'm going to add the white. Now, if my um, effect in the background gets too bright, then I will use some of that black to kind of tone it down. All right. So I'm going to load my brush with the glazing medium. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green. Okay, more glazing medium. I want this really transparent. So I've got a nice transparent color right here. I'm going to tap onto my paper towel, get it in camera shot right there. And I'm going to go over to my background and I'm going to start creating like some messy stuff in here. Okay, that's not showing up, so let me grab. I'm not sure if I want more green or more yellow. Let's we'll see what's going to show up back here. I might have to add a little white to this to get it to show up. Okay, I'm just going to scrub in. That's a lot of paint in my brush. I don't want tons in here, so I'm just very messily, very loosely. Take that big old glob out of there. Scrubbing in up in this corner. Okay, I thought I'd bring it up so that the light is the light was making it look white, I thought. But it's not white. It's like this soft green color. And I'm just gonna scrub it in up here in this cup in this corner. Grab a little bit more green. Mix it in. I want a variation of colors up here. I'm gonna have to add a tiny bit of black in there to get this to show up. I think my other one was a little bit darker. So right now I'm just doing a little scrubby scrubby up here in this corner. Glazing medium is going to keep this paint transparent. Yeah, I'm just going to bring it down a little ways and continue to scrub. I can push it around with my finger, you know, if I want to, but that corner is going to be um, a little more blurred out than some of the other areas, so I'm just going to work that just a little bit, tiny bit more white in there, just still using this puddle there that I made with the glazing medium. Okay. So I'm going to let that start drying and I'm going to start moving around my canvas. And so I'm going to grab some yellow, some glazing medium, tap on my paper towel, and then you're just going to go anywhere you want in your background and make some uh, soft circles. They don't even have to be completed. Uh, they can be any colors that you have within your palette that will show up in an area. You can have some of them that aren't even a completed circle, um, but this is what we're going to do around. 
the canvas where we want them to be. You can even have some areas that are just kind of, you know, blurred areas because, you know, that's, that's all we're doing is creating blurred areas in our background. And once we add everything on top, it's all going to come together beautifully. I do like to take my finger and kind of make sure those edges get blurred out. And this is where if you've got two sizes of brushes, you can go in and make some small circles. Um, I'm just going to use this brush here and vary my colors. And just go all around. We'll put some up here. Up here, yellow might show up a little bit more. The glazing medium is the key to getting these transparent and making them look like they're really far back. So just go all around wherever you want them to be. Some of these will be covered up. We won't even see them, but we a little bit of it could peek through and grab a little bit more green. Go here, get a little bit darker. And see, I didn't finish that one out. Um, you don't have to do that. And over here, I'm going to do some more scrubbing over here. Probably get a tiny bit of that black in there. See if this will show up. Nope. One more black. There we go. Just scrub in some just blurry stuff. That's basically all we're doing here. Just some blurry stuff. Generally, it's the lights in the background on a bouquet effect that um, is causing that blurred out look, but it can be buildings, you know. It can, so many things can be in the background that are blurry. So the flowers themselves could be blurry in the background. Go a little bit darker up here. Maybe a little lighter, because that is a really light area. And so your more lighter ones will be the ones that will appear more forward. So you see how easy this is. It's super easy. And bouquet effect can be crisp and, you know, sharp on its lines. Um, you know, if the lights are, I think if they're really, really close, it depends on how the the out of focus is on the background, but um, sometimes the edges of the bouquet can appear uh, really, really sharp. Okay, just keep going all around. I'm gonna scrub a little bit of blurriness over here. You may not see much of that after we get down. I'm going to keep this area up here more um, just dark with, with no um, stuff going on way up in there. You can overlap them. Overlapping them is better because it gives a little bit more of more lights out there effect. Okay, I need a few dark ones up here. So I'm going to grab my black and a little bit of green. And I need actually a little bit of a dark area in here, so I'm just going to scrub a little bit of dark stuff in there. Maybe a little bit more black in the mix. And even when you're done painting in your daisies, you can come back in and add some of this in here. So since this mostly has black in it, I can go over here and 
create some really dark ones. Maybe put a little bit more green in it, more glazing medium. Your lights don't all, or your your bokeh effect doesn't all have to be um, bright. But the, the ones that are going to be closer to you are definitely going to be lighter. So I'm going to grab a little bit more white and do just a couple. That might be a little bit um, closer and brighter. That glazing medium working for you. Hi, Molly Ann. I'm glad you found me. I tried to put it on Facebook. Well, I did put it on Facebook because I didn't want anybody to forget since I had posted it on there yesterday that I would be doing this. So I think I'm going to leave my background right there. When I get done, if I feel like I need more in the background, I can add it. So it's very easy to add some of this around after you do your daisies. So right now it doesn't look like much. <laughs> it's really hard to see that, um, it's really hard to visualize how that's going to come together because right now it just looks like messy spots all over, which it pretty much is. But when you add your stuff on top of it, it's going to be awesome. Okay, let's grab a round brush here. And we're going to figure out the placement for our daisies. Now, you can put much bigger daisies on your canvas than I put on mine. Um, I did smaller daisies compared to what the photograph had. But if you want it to be bigger ones, just do some bigger ones. So I'm just going to take a little bit of green and maybe some yellow and mix that in. I think this will work out okay. And I'm just going to start trying to figure out where I want my um, flowers to be. So I'm going to I'm going to put my stems in first. So I know I want one that's coming from here. I'm going to add a little black to that so you guys can see it. So I want one that's going to start there and it's going to come down. This is just roughing it in. I'm not worrying about um, the thickness of it right now. I'm just getting placement for my flowers. We'll come back and thicken these up and um, make them where we can see them better. Um, I'm going to have one here. And the ones that are here, all here, are going to be curving this way off of the canvas. Uh, let's see, one up here, and I'm just going to bring it down this way, a little bit, a little yellow so you guys can see that line, and then the black, there we go, that one just goes straight down that way, not worrying about the, sh the, the thickness right now. Okay, so let's do one that comes right about here and comes black so you can see it. And I need the brighter color because I'm in the darker area. There we go. So we're just going to make a stem there. We can adjust these, you know, if we need them taller and stuff later. Uh, I'm going to have one that's coming up here. And it's going to cross over here, come over the back, and it's going to come over here. And let's see, where else do I want one? One about here. It's going to come this way. And a short one here. And then there's going to be some over here as well. Um, 
but the only one that we'll really see a stem on is one right through here. So I'm just going to put a little piece of a stem mm -hmm. right there. Okay, so that's where we're going to start our um, the tops of our flowers. But we need to also know um, where the centers of our flowers because that's how we're going to stroke in the daisy part. So this one up here, it's it's kind of tilted away from us, but we're just going to worry about the top part of the center. So I'm just going to put uh, an oval or a circle where I want the center of this. I'm going to add a little bit of white so you can see these a little bit better. Get some of that dark green out of my brush. Because the color that I'm using right now doesn't matter. We'll be painting over all of this. So I'm going to have one here. So I'm going to have a center there. Uh, this one's going to be another one that um, you just see a little part of the center. And this one will be a full center that we'll see. And that center will probably be bigger than that. This is just giving me placement for where my flowers are going to go. Now this one here, we're not going to see any of the center once we paint this one. But I'm going to put my dot there to represent the center. And another one here. here. We'll have a little flower over here off the edge here. Alright, and then over here, I'm going to stuck my finger in that one. This one here is going to have a pretty, pretty good size center. This one here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a decent circle there. Then I'm just going to randomly place some centers down in this area down here where I want to put some flowers. Um, it could all change, um, but we can have fun with it and just, you know, if, if it doesn't work where I put the center, that's okay. I have a little, little bitty one back there, but I'm going to try and make it like the one that I, my original one that I painted here. I have one here. I do have more daisies in my, um, painting than the uh, reference photo had. So that's where I plan on putting all of my daisies. So, and I can add, you know, if I want to add more, I can add more. Okay, so this one up here I can't see very good. Let me go ahead and lighten that one up so we can see it like the other ones. So now comes the part where we're going to be stroking in the daisies. I'm going to grab a piece of paper over here. I want to show you how to uh, stroke in the daisies. So I'm going to grab my filbert brushes and bring them out. Go ahead and dampen both of them, get them woke up. Okay. So to to make a daisy stroke, it's very, very easy. We're going to be using a, a gray color to start them with. So I'm going to take some white and a little bit of black and make a, um, a light to medium gray color. If it doesn't show up, well, it should show up well once we paint on here. Um, but I just, I want to show you how to... Um, Paint your daisies, your daisy strokes. So I'm just going to paint the center in there. Okay. Now I've got a new camera here. I'm going to see if I can bring it up to be on top. Okay. Because I'm shooting from the side now. Because when I was doing it earlier, I couldn't quite um, get my hand out of the way to see... Uh, for you to see what I was doing. So you can lay your brush flat if you're making great big daisies. Lay it flat and pull it and give it a little twist. Now this is paper so it's going to suck all that moisture out of there. And that looks a little blurry on there to me. But I'm going to use the chisel edge. Let me grab a little drop of water. 
and lay it on there and pull. This is the kind of stroke that I'm going to be doing. Give it a little flick. You can give it a little curve with the bristles as you're bringing it down and you're just going to stroke your daisies all the way. I really need a lot of moisture on this paper. Stroke your daisy petals into the center of your flower. Can everybody see that okay? You let me know if it's not coming across very good. So this daisy can be on top of that one, so I'm going to just stroke, stroke. And then some daisies will um, be turned. The more pressure that you give on the brush, the fatter the daisy mm -hmm. petal will be. So we're just going to stroke right into our centers. So let's see if we can do this. If it is too blurry for you, let me know. I'll have to switch back to the upper camera. Um, water now. All right. So let's start with this one because it's a full open daisy. Does anyone want me to go back to the um, upper camera when I do this? If you do, let me know and I will switch it back to the upper camera. My chat is up here, so I should be able to see everyone's chat. So I'm just going to lay it down and pull. Give it a flick. A little bit of moisture in your brush is going to help, but not too much because we don't want these to wash out. These are like the under petals. Uh, we'll definitely be coming in to brighten them. And don't worry if you go into that center, not a big deal. This daisy right here. I'm making it um, the more open daisy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me move this over. I might have to back my camera a little bit. Get it out of the. <laughs> there we go. I'm trying to get it so the palette isn't on top of it. New camera, I'm still figuring it out, having one on the side. So we're going to go and do the rest of these. This one is a little turned up, so I'm going to have some shorter petals here. And then start bringing in some ones that curve that direction. And then as I get to the center, these will be more straight. And then curving. That was a great big one. Let me bring it over here and pull a little short one because that one is flipped up. So we'll actually have a couple petals here in the front when we get done with this one. And this one is another full open petal. So I'm just going to create some nice little strokes on here. I'm using a mix of white and black to just make a light to medium gray color. This is the under layer of the flowers so that when we put our white on top, it will really pop. Okay, um, this one over here on the side here is just a part of a daisy. So just pull a few strokes in on that trying to see my, my picture over here. And then this one is another kind of flipped one. So we're going to have some that are here and they come around, but it doesn't go all the way around because we'll be putting some on top of this one as well. And I don't worry too much about the shape of these under petals um, because we're going to add our white ones on top. So we don't have to worry too much about the shape. Okay, so this one here is a 
also going to have petals that are coming on top of it. So it's kind of like a half daisy right now, but we'll make it look like a full one when we paint it in. And then this one is a little bit smaller of a daisy, but it also has, um, we can't see the center on this one. So we'll, when we come back with our next layer, we'll be adding some in front right there. It looks kind of funny right now, but it will work out. Okay, this one down here is also kind of like this one up there. So this has given you an opportunity to really work on daisies at different um, angles and positions. Put a couple back here that we can just see coming around that. might switch back to my other camera because I think these other ones you might be able to see above when I do them. I hope. So this one down here is just a um, small daisy. So just some strokes like that. Looks a little tilted. This one is kind of behind uh, some of these other ones. This one's the one is that is the farthest behind. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to use this six filbert, but it's a much smaller flower. So if you feel like you need to go down to that four, um, that's where you would want to use the four. But I'm just not going to give the brush a lot of pressure and make a small daisy in here. It's going to be covered up a little bit um, by some of this other stuff. So it doesn't have to be great big. I'm just continuing to mix this uh, gray color. So this one's in the back. It's a full daisy. It's a pretty, pretty good size one. So let's bring out some big petals on this one. And flip this around so I can continue around. This needs to be a little bit bigger. I don't want short petals on this one. Take it right into that center. That center's just placement. All right, we got one here. Kind of laps over that one. You want your flowers to kind of lap over each other. That makes it look um, a little bit more realistic. Um, so when I did these two right here, I just did a little slash line there and a little kind of smaller slash line there. So it kind of looks like it's tilted up a little bit. Okay, um, I'm going to do this one here because that one's on top. And you can make your daisies, whichever one you want to be on top is great. And there's no right or wrong here. Just continue. This one's pretty open, but I think I'll make the ones in front a little bit shorter there. And it doesn't matter when I mix my gray, it does not have to be the same value of gray. Just mix it up and have fun. Varying values is, um, makes it look so much better. All right, got this one here. And I'm going to go ahead and do these two others here. Paint. Need more water. Okay. And let's do this one. these other two and they're a little bit bigger. This one's more open. Okay. And 
then this one is going to be both sides of it are, are dropped over um, so we're just going to do like a half of a daisy here a little bit bigger petals we won't see a whole lot of that stem when we're done here and then a couple of short strokes up there okay let me wide angle back out here so you can see it all that's our base coat on our daisies now daisies are super easy now look how just what we did there has already pushed that bouquet background back and out of focus because before you add it on top of it that's really all you could focus on was those all those dots <laughs> and and i'm sure you were probably thinking oh my gosh there's no way that background's going to look like anything um, we really have to get through ugly stages before we can get to anything that is remotely cute so um i'm going to grab a round brush i'm going to put some uh burnt sand out I'm going to mix a little yellow, I've got green in my yellow, a little burnt sienna, and we're just going to go for placement of our centers um, before we add our white stuff in, our white petals. We kind of need to know where our center is going to be a little bit better. We're going to add more colors onto our center. This one doesn't have a center, this one has a small one. So I'm just, just a mix of the yellow and a little bit of raw sienna. thicken up our stems because for right now they're pretty thin and we do not want them to be that thin so I'll take some of my green and a little bit of black oh I love black careful with that black man it takes over and I'm going to restroke my uh, stems in make them just a little bit thicker This flower here, we're going to have an underneath right here, and then the stem's going to come from it. So we'll be working on that underneath later. And this one up here will be the same. It will have an underneath part of the stem, and then it will come down into that. it here a little tiny bit more black here it's a little bit darker area now this next flower this one here it is actually turned up so the back of the flower is right there and we will work on that after we get our white petals in. And it just connects right there. Just fatten up your stems just a little bit. And this needs to be fatter and darker right through there. 
Okay, and, and then this one is also a turned up one that will have the bottom of the back of the, the um, daisy right there. And then this one I'm going to make a little bit lighter so we can see it right there, hopefully. And that's uh, pretty much all of our stems. Let's see, this one, this one will also have a little bit of the back showing here. So the stem will come into it here. Okay, so we have placement now for our petals, our, our back petals is what we've done. So we're ready to start putting on some of the front petals. And we're just going to use white. I think I'll get some fresh white out here. Alright, load my brush up here with some white. I don't want to have a lot of moisture in my brush, so if I do, I'm going to lay it on my paper towel and let that wick out. I still have some green in there, so I'm going to try to get that green out. Okay, I think I got it out now. I want green petals. I mean, we'll put a little tint of green on there, but I don't want to start out with green. Okay, so we're just going to start here and we're going to, um, if you go over the same petal here, great. If you don't, no big deal. So I'm going to bring a couple just right up to that base. I'm not going to take them over the base. Okay. That one's behind so it can be a shaded one. Put one here and one here. We'll be painting our base in. It's just for placement right now. So now I'm going to bring them up to the center now. Okay, and then this one will have two petals. Let me turn it this way because it's much easier to pull toward you. Um, two or three petals that are just right here in the front. And you can go ahead and put them in if you want to. I tried not to cover up the base of mine when I did the last one, so let me shorten them because I really want to show you how to do that base there. Just make these a little bit short. Oh, that's got yellow in it. Yellow. Still got yellow. Did not get that brush cleaned out good. Okay, so I'm going to restroke this one and this one in. These right here, I'm going to keep them up here a little bit more and I know they're into the center. But we haven't finished our center, so when we finish the center, these will look just fine. Okay? We're still in those, you know, not quite sure what it is stage. Alright, so just come in with another layer. They can be exactly on the layer that you did. Uh, they can be missing, you know, it's just... You don't have to worry about being directly on that pe that uh, gray petal that you put on there. Those are backward, back underneath petals. Oh, I hope I had you on the camera for that one. All right. I'm gonna go over here and work my way across so I'm not sticking my hand in my paint. So there's that one that's kind of peeking over the edge there. Okay, this is another one that we can see the back, so we're going to stroke in some petals here, and just right up to that green there, and then up to the center, and I actually want to finish the base before I put the two strokes in front like I did here. I think that will just be easier for you guys. I think on my original one I didn't do that, so I'm going to put one that's kind of peeking up over there. Now, just to the bottom there. Then we can bring some up here. If I need to go to that side shot again, let me know. Okay, and then this one is... Both sides of this flower are fully up. 
So we're going to have some that are down here. And then this might be where I want to go to that smaller. Except I have yellow pink in it. Let me find another one. Okay, I think I, I think I have all the yellow out. So this is where we want to stroke in some right here that are tilted up. Let me see if I can get the light to show you that. There we go. So that's how those are going to look. Maybe I need to put this light on low. I don't think that helped. I have new lights ordered, so hopefully, hopefully that will um, be better. All right, let's move on. This is another full open daisy. So just stroke in. I fully load my brush when I'm doing daisy strokes. Fully load it. Okay, <laughs> so you can see that one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I noticed the other day that my lighting was not the best. It's the lighting I've used for years, but um, now that I have more cameras working for me, I have to do something a little bit different. So then on this one, we're going to have those strokes that are going to come down over the base. So we'll finish the base in a minute and then add those last strokes on there. So we're just going to go across here and do all of our daisies with all of their strokes, their petals. Super easy. If you wanted to create a um, even third layer on here, you could definitely do that by this layer when you put it in make it a little bit lighter gray than the one that we just did the first gray layer and then go in with your white now if you're using um, Americana paints you may have to go over your white a couple of times the um, traditions paint is more pigmented so um, I can get one coat coverage with the white, but with the uh, Americana, uh, you probably won't be able to. You'll have to do a couple of coats. And you can take some of these flowers and push them even, even farther into the background. Um, I didn't do that on my first one, but I might show you on this one how you could do that. Um, if you want some flowers to appear a little bit more behind some of the other ones. I'll show you how to do that. That will be uh, something we would do at the very end. keeping you on camera so if I get off camera you be sure and let me know because I'm not always looking up at the screen to see where I'm at. Let me see if this white's still fresh enough to use. This traditions has also has a little bit more open time with it so that makes it really nice. building up and making really super fat petals. And I really like to keep them a little bit thinner. Oh, just got white paint all over. Canvas. So I'll be cleaning my hand off so I don't put it somewhere else. Baby wipe. Miracle workers. Alright, let me white angle out so you can 
see where we're at. Okay, so that's our first layer on our daisies there. All right, so what I want to do next is uh, finish up my, or not finish up, but do my centers and um, put them in. And I'm going to use that Deerfoot brush. Make sure that gets cleaned out because I'm going to have to use it here in a minute. So my Deerfoot brush, I'm going to use it um, dry. And I think what I'm going to do is me a little smaller. Maybe the palette a little bit smaller so you can see more of the canvas here. Okay, I'm going to do that um, raw sienna and yellow mix. Could add a little white in there um, if you want to, but it's just going to be this um, yellow and uh, burnt sienna. Probably, probably just called it raw sienna, but it's burnt sienna. And we're going to tap this in our centers. Easy peasy. Nothing to paint in daisies. They are one of the easiest and prettiest flowers to paint. Paint them in so many different colors. Okay, we'll let that dry. We'll come back and add some, a little bit lighter color on the top of them. Make sure a lot of that green is covered up. Let's work on the underneath part of some of these daisies. So we're going to take our green, a little tiny bit of black. And on these underneath areas, we're going to paint them in a little bit darker, a little bit darker than that. Pull that down the stem, and then go ahead and grab a little bit of yellow. Maybe a little bit more yellow. And put a little highlight on there so we can see where it's coming from. We want to just make sure they're dark and nicely shaped is all I'm doing here. So we can put those other petals on top. It's like um, Mm, not quite half of a moon kind of looking shape. Doesn't have quite the points on the edge that a shape uh, moon would have. So just tap some yellow on there. We want to be able to see that. And this one here, we're just going to bring some yellow down from it and create that little stem there. And then this one up here has the little bowl where you can see it. some of this under here. We want to make sure our stem is connecting. And a little bit of yellow. Ooh, about to have you off the camera for that one. And then let's see. This one here has the bowl. So we just want to make sure it's nicely shaped. We're going to put some petals on top of here bring this one down just a little bit more and then grab some yellow and then put a little bit of yellow on there down the stem. And I'm going to go ahead and put some yellow on this stem here that we can't hardly see anymore. Okay, so now we can add those um, other petals on there, the small ones. Turn it this way. And make sure I got a good amount of white on my brush here. 
I'm going to make some small little petals right here in the front. You don't want to cover up all of that bulb, bulb part if we don't have to. And I'm going to redo these three right here. And this one down here. Few more on that one. Okay, I think that got all of those. Now, if you need to, this is the time to go in and restroke the white on your uh, petals if you need them to get a little bit darker. I'm put some fresh white out. I'm going to do just a few brighter ones and then we're going to do a little bit of shading to separate some of these. So some white paint. I'm going to make sure the moisture is out of my brush. I want my brush damp. I just don't want it to be filled up with water because then that's going to thin down my paint. So I want to bring a few of these a little bit brighter. They don't all have to be brighter. Don't worry about getting into your center. But if you're on a canvas like me, the brush might have skipped a little bit and you have a lot of maybe background peeking through, which, which is fine as well. So just pick a few on each flower. And go to your smaller brush if you need to. will bring some of them more forward. Okay, I've got a couple over here that you can see a lot of canvas through. Yeah, I must have a raw sand on my finger somewhere because I just found it on that flower. Okay, this one here, we've got to create some um, some other petals on this one. So we want some that are um, shorter than these, but still just coming to the, um, the center. This, this flower, the petals are all folded over. So, we'll shade and create that illusion there. When we do that, let's brighten up a few more of these. Fresh paint is your key here. Daisies are definitely starting to pop off of the canvas now. Let's do our shading on them. Now we're going to make that gray value that we did with the, the black and the white. And make sure that your um, petals are dry. And we can bring some a little bit forward. These these that these ones that are, are more in the front, we definitely want to put a little bit of shading around them. Just a tiny little bit. Don't um, don't get too carried away with that. Now I'm just using a that chisel brush. Which I feel like I need more water. And a spot that doesn't have paint. This one will shade on. Ooh, that's got too much black. Go on that white. 
and shade on this side. I just want that light to medium gray color. And this is going to bring those a little more forward. Here as well, just a little bit. Just find a few places, maybe one petal overlaps another one. Um, this is where I did not get too um, picky about putting shading, ooh, about putting shading stuff in here. Um, I just wanted to do a little bit of separation here. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to push some of these back. So I'm not going to worry too much about too much separation here. You can also go in and create little fine lines on each of your petals. Well, not each of them, but you know, pick a few in each flower and put some little lines on there because that is how the daisy petals really look a little more pushed forward so this is just bringing a few petals more forward with some shading and I didn't spend too much time doing this so you don't need to spend too much time doing it either I'm going to shade here a little bit because you know, well, this one's underneath that one and that one <laughs> And this one's not a very dark petal, so. Alright. Let's finish out our centers here. I'm going to go back to that deer foot. I know that it's damp now, but it will still work just fine for what I need to do with it. I'm going to get some raw sienna. And I'm going to tap that on one side. Darken up one side of centers if you have another one and it's dry a dry one would probably work better but I had to rinse mine out so just tap it in there So one side looks a little bit darker. And then I came in with my round brush. I'm going to go to a smaller round brush. With some yellow. And tapped some of this on top. I actually mixed some white with it because I remember the yellow was too transparent. And tap this. And tap it on the other side. You can even bring some into that shaded area if you want to. this on. On the opposite side where you put that um, other color. And I had raw sienna listed on my list, but I'm not really sure what I used it for. as well, but I don't really need it now. Just pee pat tap. Little taps. Wherever you want that the center to be. Okay. We're going to shade in around the centers now. And we're going to mix a little bit of green and this burnt sienna. I'm going to make a dirty green here. I don't want that really bright green. And I've worked a lot of water in there. And now we're going to float around these centers. This one we'll just do a little bit on here. I don't want to cover up all those petals there. 
You could also use your gray value. I think on my original one, I put a little bit of the gray on a couple of them. So you could also um, make that gray value and work that around some of your centers. And I'm really just pity patting. I'm not. Um, I'm not doing a smooth float. I'm just kind of tap, tap, tapping that on there. And if you still got some of your gray showing through, like I do on several of mine, that's good because that gives you a little bit extra um, effect in that shading color that you're putting on there, that center dirty green color. If these petals don't look lifted enough for you, then you can go back in with another shading that, that gray. Okay, that's going to do the centers. I want to finish up the stems here. So we're just going to make some uh, greenish yellow color for a highlight. might want to, to know which one is on top of another one. This could be a little bit more yellow. I think a little bit more yellow is prettier. So there is our stems. Okay, so now this is where you can look at it and decide, do I want some more of that bouquet effect in there? Because if you do, this is where it's going to be happening. And I did come back in and do some here because it looked like a leaf was in front of uh, these stems over here. So I'm going to put my glazing medium out somewhere. load it up and I'm going to get some green and let's see I use some yellow it looks like in my photograph and I might try, try this uh, um, burnt sienna I keep wanting to call it raw ember goodness gracious so I'm going to tap some of that off my brush actually I'm get a little bit more of that raw and this is where I'm going to come in and nope, definitely needs to be darker. A little tiny bit of black in there. Maybe if I can get some black. Ooh, baby! Biker, biker! I don't want that much black. I want it to be darker, but not that much darker. Okay. Let's try this. Still not dark enough. There we go. Now I'm going to scrub this over. Um, it's still going to be kind of transparent. A little bit more yellow in there. There we go. Just kind of give the look of a leaf. Take your finger, blur it out. Blurry is the key here. Let's put a little bit in here. Um, I don't think I'm going to bring some of this color up in here because I just feel like it needs a little bit more something going on. And then you can look around your piece and see what it needs. Mine needs, definitely needs more black in the background. So I'm going to wipe a lot of that out. Because I just want to be kind of very subtle here. It's a little bit of green with it. It won't be quite so dark. More blazing medium. Glazing medium is the key here. Any of your spots that you feel like are too bright, this is where you can take this darker color and scumble over it and tone them down. 
scrub in some darker areas. I start off with very light pressure when I'm doing this because I don't know how much paint's going to come out of my brush. And I want some, some darker areas back in here. And you can come in and add more of the circles back in here too, if you feel like you need that. Alright, over here I'm going to add a little bit more darkness. Okay, make sure you use that glazing medium because that's going to keep it transparent and not have it be opaque and cover up everything that you've done. Okay, maybe a little bit darker stuff in here. Rub it out. It's so easy to do. Alright, so I was going to show you if you wanted some of these flowers to be pushed back a little bit farther. Let's say like this one here, instead of it being bright, maybe it would be a different color because it's in the background. So to do that, we're just going to make a little wash of that gray color. And you're going to have a lot of water here because we don't want to cover up our flower. We're just going to put a little of this wash over the flower. I have to do it a little darker for you to see it. And we're going to push, let's push this big one back. So I'm just going to wash over the whole flower with this gray color. Don't want to get it on these flowers, but if I do, I'll just come back in and stroke those petals. This one here, I need to put a petal in here. That one's pushed back a little bit. I could go much darker with my gray and push it back even farther, but it's pushed back a little bit more than these are here. So, I think that is going to finish up this painting. You can certainly keep going at it, do more. Um, more flowers if you want more flowers. I can't see that stem very well, so let me add a little bit more lighter color on there. Ooh. We're a lot of lighter color. We want to be able to see them. We don't want them bright in our face, though. So let me know what you thought of this one. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this one. Um, I really enjoyed painting it with you guys or for you guys. Bring that stem a little more forward. Just a little bit of yellow paint. Over a little bit more. Definitely need some water here. You can certainly keep tweaking and playing with it and everything. So like these here, if they're too bright, take a little wash of your green. And maybe back or raw sienna, dirty up that green just a little bit. Nice sheer wash. And you can wash over those and tone them down. Make them a completely different color. This one, I feel like it's three bright ones right there together. It's a little bit too much for me. But otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. I really like the background. Thank you, Claudette. Thank you, Rosanna. Thank you, Elizabeth. I am so glad you all stayed and watched me paint this. I hope you're going to go and paint some bouquet background on whatever your heart desires. Um, put some different flowers in there, make bigger flowers. Uh, just have a lot of fun with it because I really enjoyed um, painting this one. I think it turned out really good. So it was a lot of fun.
a lot of fun. Now, now I can really see that that one's not as white. Um, it's definitely farther back than, than these are because these are much brighter white here. But, um, I think that is going to be it for me, you guys. Thank you so much for hanging in there. And I hope some of you painted along. But if not, I hope you're going to paint it and have fun with it and create some beautiful daisies with a beautiful bouquet background. Thank you, Mary. I will see you guys on the next live stream. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great, great day.